everybody. Today I have a special, wonderful surprise and wonderful moment for me. I have visiting here from the Colburn School, Hello. my dear colleague and friend, Elizabeth Wright. Hello. She's a marvelous teacher and I met her a few years ago and we became great, great friends. And I think she's wonderful. So there is one point in the lesson I'm going to have her teach something that I think she teaches so wonderfully to Ethan in my place because I think it's really important for all of us to understand that no one can be the absolute authority on everything and that we all need each other as teachers and we need to be open to learning from every possible situation that we can learn from. So I'm gonna, she's gonna butt in at a certain point because I want her to, okay. <laughs> Okay, because I found so helpful. She gave a master class yesterday, and what she did was so helpful. And you know, people can be all saying the same thing, but with different words and just slightly different ways of doing it. And suddenly, one thing that someone else says can just click with a with a student that didn't click when you know. I often in classes. You're a teacher, you're watching a class. And you say, but I tell the student that every single week. Right. Why aren't they doing it? Right. No, it happens all the time. All the and time. then you realize sometime it's just because they're under a new situation. They hear it again and suddenly they do it. That could be. But sometimes it's just a different word. It's a different one little minute thing that they show you that you didn't hear and it makes it click. So be open to that. Anyway, that's my way of thinking. I'm always learning from as many situations as I can. Anything that I feel is helpful is wonderful. Okay, Ethan, of course, welcome. Ethan, you all know that before we do anything, we find our feet on the ground, you know, really well. Then stand up a minute. Just. Stand up and balance on your feet, you know. Right, you can do kind of Tai Chi. Make sure your feet are not too much like this, but really forward, forward in a walking position because that gets our hips and our bottom al aligned correctly, okay? So you're like this. Now feel and drop your shoulders, which you know, I know, but I'm just going over it to the last one. Now let's sit and remember, feel not like you're plopping on the chair and then you're back on the chair. But it, talking about magnets, you can also feel a magnet on, the bo on your bottom of your spine, on your bottom, and just feel like you're drawn to the chair, but then you're ready to run a race too. So I very often just do this, you know? I. I move into the place that my feet are really, really planted. And then in yoga, of course, we always go over, and I, I'm just, I'm a new affectionato of yoga because it can be so helpful. And feel your big toe inside your toe, your little toe, the heel of your foot, and just feel balanced, you know? And then, of course, we're always slightly re ready to run a race. So, you know, there's a magnet here, there's a magnet on your heart. You're bringing the cello into you, but there's the last moment you're also drawn to the cello so that your shoulders and your back, and then settle into your feet really comfortably. But you know, you're tall, almost that chair is getting too low for you. We'll have to put a book on it or something soon. Just you know, feel this, this slightly forward direction. Now, just for my colleagues, anybody who's watching this, I'm not a fa a f in favor of slanted chairs. Mm -hmm. I know there was a time that they were telling all cellists to try those slanted chairs. They, they don't really help. I don't know, I spent a lot of time, I had two back operations, you know, with great orthopedic doctors, and it is much better to be in a straight line from your hip to your knee, so that from the knee down, you're really planted with your feet, okay? Anyway, so we've, we always go over that. Now, let's just do 
some rolls just because I want you to feel warmed up and not just on camera playing a scale. So let's go. We're going to work on G minor because Kapolevsky's in G minor. So play your D and your G first for the bow. position is a very hard note and your whole lives you'll I work on getting my first finger into so I get a good now put that four and now soft thumb and just do a Try, since you have long finger, even try to get four coming from the knuckle. Okay, try that. Good, just so you're ready, okay? Then sometimes it helps just get four down so you feel, and because it's much easier, you know, to stretch backward than to extend forward. So sometimes it's really good just to start with four. in a melody that's great but we cellos are so often in harmonic positions really get three really perfect when you're doing to be a wonderful quartet player. He's just marvelous. So just know that in quartet, most of the time, you're going to have to have that kind of intonation. Mr. Starker does, did, you know, wonder. Uh, It's a very good book to have, by the way. Very useful. It's a good, those are good exercises for you. Okay, honey. So normally in the lesson, I just say, Eth, come on, play a good scale. Because, by the way, I, I studied with Yasha Heifetz and Piotr Gorski for, for two years in California. And Mr. Heifetz, you'd walk in the door, no matter what instrument you played, he'd just say, play a scale. And you had to play it you would do the whole kind of flesh system of scales. And if the scale wasn't good, he wouldn't get angry. No matter what you've heard about Yasha Heifetz, most of the things people say are not true. He never got angry. He just said, thank you, goodbye. And he went, I don't care if you practice the Tchaikovsky Concerto or anything perfectly, Paganini Caprices, the violin, everything. He never got mad, he just said, goodbye. That's all outside next week and you couldn't redeem yourself mm. you just you couldn't redeem. there was no redemption it was just goodbye uh -huh. so so here maybe now i'll let you turn in a little so i can see you better turn yeah angle the chair just a bit more, honey. yeah okay so let's a lot of the time i play scales in thirds with my students so they're not left you know just playing alone uh, so we're going to do I do often the Klangel system, especially with melodic minor that Ethan's doing. So let's just do a G minor scale. So before. I listen to B flat. Higher, higher. Even a little. 
hair. Do you hear? So I know you're thinking minor, so you want to keep the B flat very close to A, but to be really harmonically in tune, it's higher than we think, okay? So play, okay. Uh... Exercise in this position, up to seventh position, do what Tortelier did. Uh. So you're really working on that position. I know most people release their thumb and they're already here, but there's in, if any of you own the Tortelier How I Teach How I Play book, it's very, very worthwhile to get. He has an exercise. Let me just get it out. He, Oh, don't, don't pay attention. It's okay. It's, you don't have to wipe it up. It's just water. It's okay. Don't worry. I'll get it after. It won't make the floor do anything. Don't worry. There's no paper towels in here. Okay. I'm just going to show them an exercise. We'll just try one line of it, Ethan. I know you haven't done it in a while, but it's a great exercise to do. Let me find it. Okay, okay. By the way, everybody, it's for practice of sliding shifts in the fourth, fifth, and sixth position. This is just the best exercise. We're just gonna do the first one, Ethan, I'll show you. And always, what you're supposed to do is keep your thumb back, like <laughs> slow bow because yesterday yesterday Elizabeth noticed that sometimes you were using too much bow and it was a good comment that I probably wouldn't have noticed personally to, to comment on so it was great for me so let's do slow bow shifts okay and um, now keep keep your keep your second finger round honey yourself now and before the shift feel the and one and and that's your preparation always the and one and two because you're coming out and up so it's always analogous you know to shooting a basket or a baseball a pitcher you know, the gesture. So try it. Just, we're just going to do this line. It's okay. And then we'll do the scale. And. Okay, get. I'm going to hold. I'll hold the F, huh? So it's not just the finger doing this, but it's the palm support. So just so that B flat, E flat. Good, better. Do it again. And good. Now, good. Good. Now do it again. Now, Mr. Starker was very famous. For as you're coming out of the shift, you come up with your head. So you would do one and try that and just 
just come out of the shift. A slow ball. comes from, of course, the same thing, but if you also are interested, I highly recommend Stephen Doan has great exercises for this, and they're scooping, so you let's try to scoop more. Uh, now, Elizabeth, what, come, come, ha, what would you have somebody do? You were talking about slow bow. Would there be anything you would add to do that, to that um, with the bow? Um, what do you have them do, your students, with the bow? Just to make sure it's slowing down during the shift. Slow so, down the bow you, during the shift, and yeah. as you come out, you expand. You, you sink in, yeah. I okay. mean, essentially, that's what was happening, I think, yesterday a little bit, right? You just speed, it's speeding up. It's natural to speed the bow up on a shift. Mm -hmm. you, you, the left hand's moving mm -hmm. faster, but you actually have to do the opposite and, and slow the bow speed down as you shift, and then when you get to the arrival point, sink the bow. So let's try that on Da. Thank you. Thank you, dear friend. Uh, oh, I did the, I made it up and I was wrong. So, uh, Tortelier says that then you go all through all seven positions and you don't pick the thumb up. So when we get to um, keep your thumb back. Put your thumb up. Now, many times I would have him uh, I have my students go back to the last note in the old position before they put their thumb up and play it with the thumb so we know exactly where the thumb is. So let's do that, okay? Now, nah, your thumb's out. You didn't need to. Like, that you didn't mean to. Like I saw. Let's just do that. Um, now try not to bunch. If Mr. Starker were here, he'd tell you not to bunch your second finger over your first finger. Air. He'd always say air between the fingers. Um, go back. Flicking the fourth finger back in a circular way is something hard to learn right away at the beginning. Of course, most kids, they want to keep their fingers close to the string. Uh, so, of course, you could practice for slowly. But then, when you're trying to connect them, you have to get this gesture. So let's just practice. A, G, G. Good. So that's it. Then you can also add Ethan. You don't have to do it all the time, but it's good also to be able to have a little more flexibility in the fourth finger. So, so sometimes when you're practicing, get the first joint of the finger down, you know. So you're going on. Now we've got to get the uh, Let's just do that. Uh, okay, then. 
then we got to get. See, try knowing that the, the B flat is going to be a whole tone from the D, from the C. When you put your finger up, try not to get it smashed against the first. So let's try it again. Just uh, scale that way work on your scale first but just really being sure you know when am I going to put my thumb up and where where does it really belong in the position when you're playing okay okay let's go on to your etude a little because we haven't done etudes in a while and this is going to be a joint lesson with Elizabeth so you can come in I want you to come even sit here so, yeah we're going to trade off we're going to trade off. we're going to trade off. just because you were showing me something that Great. Okay. So I'm just going to have you play the first three lines, or up to here, okay? Just perform in the best way you can. And then we're going to go very slowly over the da, 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 da. It's, this etude looks basically quite simple until you get to the last two lines, and then it's. Why do I have to do this? Me too. What? What is this? <laughs> okay, so just go for it, honey. Just go for it. <laughs> on the left hand which basically was very good but you know just working on it and then I'm gonna have Elizabeth she showed me really you have to find a point on the bow exactly where you can do this stroke really well and she recommended and she'll she'll tell you that we mark it on the bow and you that you play this by memory and you're gonna look at always staying in this place. But she'll do all that work with you. Let's just do a little, because we were working on it in other lessons, I want to do stop and plop actually first on every finger. So you go up, plop, plop, shift. Stop and plop because I think it's so important to do it every lap. Plop, plop. Oh, except you got to shift there. You know, you remember, just it's okay. Plop, rock. Okay, now let's try on the up bow, on the pushing, not keeping so much tension in your arm when you're pushing the bow back up. Try to let it come back with a little less tightness, okay? Uh, first. Shift. Now shift, when you have the shift, waiting in a split second more. So you're going to go on. Shift. 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 You're, you're stopping and plopping on every note, but the shift I want you to be more aware of. Richard Aaron calls it wait, wait. Okay? Instead of just a wait for the plop, you know. Bump, pop, now, bop, bop, wait, wait, so you're sure you're in the new position. So, now, you're, by the way, honey, you're not going to have time to vibrate. It's good that you practice for bride, but you're not going to have time to vibrate. So, I, I'd recommend just try it. Try it without vibrato, okay? To, to loosen up your thumb, when you go one, two, three, really feel, I, I 
get the feeling maybe you're holding on a little bit with your thumb. When you do a plop, see my thumb? Uh, so if I'm doing my thumb, I get the feeling you're going kind of like that. Try and just let your thumb be very, very fluid in back of the, you know, okay? Just think of your thumb. Now, now it's looser. See, I, I see it kind of doing this. Do a, try it without your thumb even. Uh, good. Okay. So everybody in any kind of etude like this, you first start with that. Then, then I start working But I am really rolling. You know, Mr. Starker was so one finger at a time. He'd say all the time, one finger at a time. So this. Small notes are a part of one big, long, beautiful note. So every short note, don't think about it as this tiny little thing that they, it's got to be part of something so beautiful. So it's got to have its beauty in the contact. Let's do it here. Just one second. Now, Elizabeth had people do something yesterday that I loved. Hold the string like this, or let's do it on the D string. Just play the opening of the, just feel your fingers on the wood. I love that, that was really good. I've never learned that. So you play on the wood, one, two, three, four, bum, 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 bum. You feel the wood, and each finger, see, let go with your thumb more, honey. So each finger just has its moment of being, it's just me, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here, I'm here, it's me. And that's going to be a beautiful note, you know? Beautiful. Anyway, now, Elizabeth, why don't you work on the... She okay. has a great thing to do with the bow. See, the next thing I would have you do would be to play each note, for example, two times. Ba, 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 ba. But Elizabeth teaches it in such a great way. I, a little bit differently and, and complementary yeah. to kind yeah, of what you're, we're, yes, you're we're very doing. Compliment. Complimentary, yes, it's complimentary. just complimentary, but I just yes. like her way of showing it. Okay, so um, we were talking about um, sort of how to get to um, the, the kind of stroke that you want for this piece, and what 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 is the, what is your understanding of what it should be? Um, have you guys talked about the type of stroke? We haven't the, gotten that far yet. Got it. Okay. Oh, so maybe we, you could first. Pick well, the part of the bow? Well, or the, the, reason, I, well, the, reason, <laughs> the reason I'm asking is because um, if it's a sautier stroke that you're after, if that's the idea of it, then um, we want the hair to basically stay connected to the string for that type of a stroke, right? So, but we still want the stick to bounce, so we get that kind of crisp, crisp sound. So, um, generally speaking, um, when I'm teaching a sautier stroke, I uh, start with what I call a rebound stroke. And what that looks like, I'll do it. Yeah. Yes. What that looks like more is a little bit further out in the bow for your contact point, because right now you're a little in the, towards the frog. So more from the balance point to the middle. And then just feeling one str strong impulse on the down bow and then letting the up bow come back so more like this can you try that Crisp more down so, bow. so 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 now when you're doing that i'm watching you you're we, we always want to use the whole arm so i'm going to talk about parts of the arm but <laughs> I want it to be very holistic because actually we never want to try to think about separating anything out really, but you need to be far enough out that you feel like you can comfortably open and close your forearm. Just do that and see if you can just keep 
keep your bow hold. You don't need to change anything out here. But just bring your as I am. Oh, really? So you always feel a tiny bit less with the left arm. So it's interesting. I mean the right arm. So a little bit more this way. Your arms are also, everybody's a little bit differently. So in order to kind of achieve this, I actually think you, you need a little bit higher elbow. Does that feel more comfortable now? Yes, yes. Okay. So now are you getting that? another do you have a Kleenex available <laughs> there's another way yeah. you can get this kind of a feeling of impulse on the down bow go ahead and put your bow back no, no no you were fine okay and I want you to try to imagine you have to punch a hole in this Kleenex go this way punch a hole in the Kleenex yep put a little bit more energy on that yeah that that was better uh -huh. That's better. Okay. Try again. Yep. Good. Okay. Now go for the sound. You want them to be da 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 da. Same sound. Keep your bow on the string. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. That's that's the idea. So starting here with this sort. Are you getting the feeling of? I'm having one kind of strong feeling on the down and then the up bow is just kind of coming back naturally. Do you have that feeling? Um, <laughs> some people describe it like a bouncing ball. If you bounce the ball, you would kind of, you know, you kind of push it to the ground and it automatically comes back up, right? That's good. Okay. Now, you're pretty far out in the bow, which for now I think is okay. Um, after you practice this a little bit, you can kind of see where in your bow it feels the most comfortable and with your arm. Okay, that takes some time to determine, but to practice something like this in this way, you would just do that stroke on each note. So, etc. And it's easiest to try, why don't you try to keep your eye on the bow. So keep your eye on the bow. So try to stay in this realm. If you find you're suddenly going to the frog, you're pushing a little too much on the up bow. So the goal is kind of stay in the same spot. Good. Good. Try to see if you can unlock a little bit your, your forearm. That was great. It looks a little stiff. I'm looking over there because I can't see you straight. <laughs> it looks a little stiff. So again, it's the full arm, but we want to feel a fluidity, especially through the, the elbow, forearm, and wrist as we do this. Mm -hmm. Better. It's better. Good. Don't push the elbow. Good. Keep going. Good. 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 Keep going. When you do the up bow, the, the see it comes in. Yeah, it, it the the angle is it's going out in. Out. Right. Yeah. So and I don't teach that enough to my students. So could you watch and see? You that, mean when I'm doing the stroke? Yeah. See see how it goes out in. Yes. That you see how uh, well, she, the frog. It's a, it's a circular kind of movement. I think. So try, could you reiterate that with him? Mm -hmm. A okay. little bit. Let's do, it, let's do it on the D string. Open D a little bit more. Is that it's kind of the easiest Maybe. place to see yeah. it? Slightly, mm -hmm. for me, yeah, lean that's the better. stick a little. That's yeah, better. That's better. That's yeah. better. You two mm -hmm. rolled we'll that roll way. Too rolled out, yeah. That's okay. That's, that's better. Yeah. Now, can you, can you just relax it a little bit? I know it's a new thing and you're trying it, but try to feel more of a, a buoyancy in the, in the arm as you go. Great. And keep the hair on the string. Oh. 
gist of it okay so that that beginning sort of rebound stroke and getting that feeling um, eventually you could put it with this this etude again starting with every note this way etc and then you could just do twos then you could do fours Okay, and then as it speeds up, you it should naturally start to to have that sautier kind of sound, which is the, the, the crisper sound and the bouncing of the stick that we want while while the hair is still staying on the string. So that's the gist of the progression. Wonderful. So now, I, could I we just help, the words. last thing, yeah. could we just help him find a, a good place that I mark off on his bow? Sure. For that? So help him. And I, okay. I brought let me, some. Let me actually just. Some little things that I have. Let me, can I try your cello and bow? Okay. Thanks. For you, your arms are very good. This is a very heavy bow. That's another thing. I might make this a little bit harder. And I, now I'm feeling this is have pretty heavy, so um, if you're if you're feeling if you're feeling a little tight here, that also sometimes a heavier bow can create that. You were almost to the middle, right? Okay. I think you can try a little bit. Can you try a little bit closer to the balance point? So scoot back just a little bit. Thank try you. it on the D string. Okay. Maybe a little further off. Try that. Does that feel better? Yeah. Just, go, just I for him. I would just go a little bit farther out. Just okay. So just play, there. play the place. You think this is right, Elizabeth? Yeah. For now. For now. Okay. I mean, it, it's likely to, to change and sort of evolve right now. Okay. So, when you're practicing, you want to keep your eyes on the, on the sticker, on the place. And as a, as a, I, I, we, my students call me Susan. Yeah, so I call fine. you Elizabeth. Okay. And, and, um, you know, if, if you go way past this, it means the up bow's too long. You know, or you're pushing. You're or you're pushing. You're pushing too pushing much. Too okay, much on, so. so you're trying to stay. She explained to me right in this, right, this exact place. Okay, and I think this will be a lesson for. Very important, <laughs> very important for everything. We won't go through this right now. Let's let's do that some Kapolevsky. Okay, I would skip to something new now. And why don't we, since we worked the last movement of the Kabalevsky last time, let's, we can work pretty much section by section, okay? I couldn't find my photocopy. Oh, do you know, you don't know it by heart, do you, yet? Um, no. I have the, extra here. You do? Oh. Yeah. Oh, you're an angel. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, yes, with the fingering. Okay. Great. Okay. So we'll play. Well, first let's just do the theme. You know, let's just get the theme done and then we'll go on. Okay? There was so many good things. Wonderful. Okay, I know you were scared. You just started. The first shift wasn't great. 
ba da da. So let's just practice that for me, honey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, a little thing that can help: the note before the shift has to be done really well because it's again it's a kind of aim even if it's a backward shift so make sure that your first finger sweetheart is really in the string because then you can rebound better back on your fourth finger so just and you know this i think you know the theme by so take the music just uh, see you then and then you couldn't get it so just play just play those three notes and make sure you're pressing the first finger good now let's play it um uh, in rhythm ryth rhythmically da 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 So be da 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 di. So and then really snap your finger down. Okay, so now ring as the C does. It's because the finger is a little, it's just not um, in the center of the note. So try to get and Steve, Steve don't, teaches, I learned from reading his book better, I had a better concept of this circle that you have to flick the fourth finger under the hand because if you try to do it in a straight line it it doesn't catch as well so that wasn't good teacher overboard no good try the thumb thumb okay so let's do a weight plop wait now see if you would plop that, that's why I worked this week on getting the fourth finger not to do this. Because you see, when you land on a fourth finger like this, the clarity of the note won't be as good. So. <laughs> Bowls. 
see the beef was it you'll, mm. you'll get you'll you're so smart you'll get it just it takes practice okay so so you got to turn everything into double okay that was basically what I had to say it was very good either way so you could do position play it all with stop bows too okay good that's that's basically what we have to do in that okay okay now go on next the first variation see but he has such long fingers i'm looking at a little bit but try like a play just play highest note play the E flat so you finish on let's see how if you really wanted your fingers to be well balanced you'd probably have them standing up you play things but it really does help since we want da, 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 de, that note is so interesting to hear just play the E flat alone uh, and make it the most beautiful sound you can make on an E flat deal with the bow has to do with the bow to make the sound as beautiful as you want. Huh? Okay. Also, I wouldn't really use the harmonic. I find the note with the harmonic, but when you play it, keep the fingers down because I, that, that, that's what kind of, you go, I see why it's because you use the harmonic kind of. So press down. Huh? Okay, so so that note is so interesting. So da 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 di do E flat da da di di do and C. So you want these to know. So play those tone notes with the most beautiful sound you can make. Too. Good. Okay. So that's, you know, and I would do the whole thing with more stop bows, you know? Okay. So... Did you did you play all? Did I let you play through the whole thing, or I didn't let you get to this? Where did I stop you? Um, you didn't really stop. Well, play the whole very Go go on. I'll, 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 we'll get to the end. Huh? You'll keep that in mind and see what you can do now. Okay. <laughs> more bow speed on the E flat. Because there was this shift. Uh, 
not being very mm -hmm. picky. Mm -hmm. Is it a third finger? Ooh, maybe that's why it isn't good. Uh, well, I did it. I put, if you're more comfortable with two, it'll be hard to play the rest in two. So now do it with three. Uh, to become since you're so good do a real diminuendo whatever the notes are thumb sticking up there because you'd be in this position no really try uh, see, keep your hand keep your hand this, that this is six position it's really important position so do Disappear, sweetheart. Play dee da 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 da. Play stop bows. Now, what are you going to do with bow? Dis Try lots of bow at the beginning. On yesterday, not harping on. That's a terrible thing. Yeah. She was talking about that as you threw the shift a little slower bow, and then you open. Sorry, I didn't mean that. I didn't even mean. That. Well, depending on how you want that that note to sound, right? Yeah. to be more aware of your thumb you know when you're up there the like your thumb was anywhere but you'll think of it go on go on now let's try it So you'll use all those 
things you learned in the etude for this variation, okay? So let's go on ba 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 ba. Just play it the way you practice for the moment. I think it's fourth thing. in that part. Okay, now let's play the lyrical part. you know, to be thinking about what you're doing. I would, sweetheart, pick out all the best notes in this and again, play them alone. So, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, play the G. to that G? How are you going to get to that? Let's decide. I mean, there are a million ways. Is it up bow? Uh, maybe it's not a bow. I'm wondering maybe my bowing is bad. Uh, that we're 
pushing up. So da da da, and don't move until you're really ready to get your G. time but I want you to see how every note has a direction no matter what it, they, they just don't ever connect like this da. so da, 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 di, da, di, da. you know everything everything so just uh, so do from <laughs> about that uh, shift okay and really give each note the great 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 oboist mark lifshi who was one of the great symphonic oboists of the 20th century he was a painter and he died younger than we would have liked, that's for sure. He had leukemia, and he, he was my husband's best friend. And Mark gave a whole lesson to one of his students, a whole hour, on just playing some repeated long tones and creating a world. He said every note has a world inside of it. It has a life, it has a death, and then it connects to other notes and they become part of a universe of a phrase but every note has a shape everyone every when you go uh, see my e flat was uh, even though it's a line going up uh, They're not, so if you think of each note, he talked about the color red to his student. That's why I'm thinking of it, because he was a wonderful painter, Mark. And just think of all the shades when you Leonard Rose always spoke this too, the paintbrush, you move a paintbrush and the color gets a form. It never stays static. So I want you to try, try do from th th this one, da, 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 yeah, that one. And just try to feel. Every note, give every note. It's 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 moment in the universe. Okay, like the universe is peopled with millions of people and everyone has something to contribute. That's why we always learn from everybody, you know, if they're good. We can unlearn too, but that's... <laughs> just Chinese snow cello, but it's wonderful. But it still is not a... <laughs> you gotta find the place where that note, just play the A a while, and find where your fingertip has to be. Now, Elizabeth might, I learned, you know, you could try da, 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 play it on the wood a minute. 
and then play it on the string. Maybe that'll help. Yeah. Even if we just do this kind of thing in the lesson, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Now I want you to play the A alone. Yeah, try to get in the flesh. There's a little bit of the bone of your finger that can do the work too. Uh, see, because the flash, if it's to like this, see what you're doing is, is and it sounds beautiful, by the way. Cheryl, I'm not, I don't mean, but it can sound better. It's this. You see how it doesn't have the same consistency as. Now, also. Practice a little. And just play up bow A, la, la. Because it's hard to go from an open string to a. It, it's harder with the bar. See, that was harder, not good. I think maybe you're a little sharp on the notes, so you don't have as much wiggle room for your vibrato. You can try that. Yeah. Yeah, just look for that A where it resonates. was the right pressure of your finger. That's gonna make the, so you, re then what you do, everybody, remember the feeling, you did it. It was, remember that feeling and try to do it again. Better, you see, before you were going a little sharp, you know why? Because the harmonic has a lot, it's a big place. So, Pianogorsky used to make us pretend there were no harmonics on the cello and always work. Uh, so, you find it, okay? Anyway, enough said about Do one more time and then we'll go out. so much this, a little more kind of What's the connection note to the B? Oh, fa. And then you to practice aiming. Wait. Try that. Ba, ba, wait. So you can line up your figure. Getting there. It's get, try it again. Ba ba. Wait. Wait. Good. Now come out with your head. Now do the same thing. We have to make Mr. Starker up in heaven. Happy. Uh, I hope he's in heaven. I'm not sure. Anyway.
got a lot to digest. Wonderful, wonderful lesson. Great, Ethan. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Come stand. Wait a minute. I want everybody to see my friend, Elizabeth. Yeah. Nice to be here. Yes, great to be here. Great to have you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you.